Hello Bridgewater College Education 370 students. In this screencast you're going to learn how to create a grade book for a teacher who grades on a point scale. This teacher has quizzes, tests, homework, and participation all going into a student's final grade. In fact, this teacher has decided that quizzes should be worth 10 points each, tests should be worth 100 points each, and homework 20 points each, participation 10 points. Now, there's no reason why they have to be worth the same. She could have made this quiz worth 15 and this test worth 150 if she wanted to. The method's going to work no matter how many points you assign to a test or a quiz. Now, when you first enter your students' names, if if you can't see all the names, now for example, let me drag this over for a little bit and you'll see that sometimes part of the names are hidden. Well, you know how to change the column width by gra grabbing between the, the two letters uh, and, and dragging and that expands your column width. So for example, over here I can't see the full word participation, but if I drag over far enough I can. We're going to do a couple of other little items as far as making the um, spreadsheet more attractive before we start calculating grades. Now, for example, I'm going to boldface uh, the first two rows. The first row's got maximum points in it, and the second row has the titles. So let's just highlight one and two. Anytime you want something to apply to the entire row, click on the numbers to the far left. And now we'll just click bold, and they'll be bold. Also, I, I would like that these columns, columns B through K, uh, in fact, I'm going to have another column for uh, grades over here, too, that I, I would like to have those centered. So why don't I highlight those columns and click on the center icon, and now that looks a little bit better. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't you put name on top and maximum points on row 2? Why do you have maximum points on top and the name on, on, on row 2? Well, I'm going to show you why I chose to do that. I'm going to click on the 2 just to highlight row 2. And now I'm going to, to um, look at data, filter. When I do that, notice that what's happened is that now small icons have been inserted in my spreadsheet. And this allows me to sort. So if I want to alphabetize my students, I click on this and say sort them A to Z. And now my students are alphabetized. Had I put max points after name, then it would have thought that max points was a student and it would have alphabetized max points and then this would have been in the middle of my spreadsheet which isn't really what I wanted so that's why I chose to put the name on row 2 instead of row 1. This also gives me the chance to come over and sort my uh, data. For example, if I would look, like to look at these test scores from high to low, maybe test 2, high to low, I can sort them. And now I've got the highest test scores on top and the lowest test scores on the bottom and so forth. I'm going to go back to alphabetizing, though. I'm going to sort these students from A to Z. And uh, I'm going to leave that auto filter turned on, although you can certainly turn it on and turn it off uh, as you wish. OK. Um, at this point, we're, we're ready to start calculating grades. We've got, got it looking pretty good. OK, the first thing we need to do is to calculate the maximum number of points available, because that will uh, be a factor in computing a student's grade. And, and to do so, I'm going to let Excel do the addition for me. So I'm going to click on this cell L1. Um, there's several ways to do this. There's actually a shortcut. If you just click on the Sum button up here, Excel sort of reads your mind and says, OK, I'm thinking you want to add the numbers in B1, C1, D1, so forth, all the way through K1. And if you agree with that, hit the Enter key, and sure enough, it, it works. It does the uh, sum for you. In my case, 300 points. Let's give this a label, and the label is going to be max points. So that's the maximum number of points uh, possible. Maybe for the sake of aesthetics, I'd like to be able to see the word max points. And right now, I can only see max. So what I could do is to go over here between the 2 and the 3 and drag down and create a wider um, bar. And now I can see max points. OK, at this point, I want to do the same thing for Betsy and Gus and Georgia and Thomas and Henry. So I could just, again, click here, go to the Sum button and hit the Enter key, and it will add up the points. Um, there's also a way that since I've got Betsy's formula working right, if I 
move my cursor to the bottom right hand corner you'll see it turns to a plus sign hold your mouse button down and drag and it will automatically copy that formula for the other four students and now as you can see I have the sum of the points for each of these students at this point I want to compute the average grade so I want to compare Betsy's score to the total number of points possible and Gus's total to the total number possible. Now I'm actually going to do it wrong the first time and then we'll see what, what was wrong with that. The, I'm going to put this in a column over here, column M called average. It's going to be a formula so I'll start by typing equal. Now you might think well sure just take this number which is his 231 I'll, I'll click on that which happens to be L3 and divide by of course the division is the slash symbol divide by the 300 which is in L1 and when I do so and hit the enter key it indeed does compute this number correctly 77 percent is right uh, for Betsy so if I try using that trick of copying her formula for the other four, notice what happens. I get errors. I get a score here for Henry that's better than 100%. This is just not right. So what I want to do is to see why I made this error. Well, it turns out that when I created my original formula, I told it to divide L3 by L1. In effect, I told it to divide this number by the number 2 above it. So when it went to calculate Gus's grade, it tried to divide his points by max points. And that's a word, that's not a number, so that's why I got an error message there. When I got to Georgia's, it divided her 208 by the one two above it which happens to be Betsy's 231 well that's not fair we shouldn't let Georgia's score be based on Betsy's score and likewise uh, Thomas's score was his points divided by the number two above it 276 so in, in general you know I've not done this correctly and Excel doesn't know what you intend to do so you need to make sure your formula is set for what you intend to do not what you tell it to do okay I'm going to fix this formula by making a small change in the division L3 divided by L1 the fact is I wanted to always use L1 in the division not just the one that happens to be two above I always want to divide max points for each student by L1 so the way to do that is to go up here to L1 and put a dollar sign around the L and um, before the one so now it says L3 divided by dollar sign L dollar sign one and all that says is that I always want you to use this number when you do your calculation now of course it doesn't change Betsy's grade but notice when I grab the bottom corner and drag down it does change the other grades and they are now mathematically correct oh they don't look real pretty and we're gonna fix that up to fix that up incidentally I'll click on the M because I want all numbers in this column formatted differently <clears throat> I'm going to right click I'm going to, to choose format cells I'm going to go to number and this happens to be a percentage and let's make it maybe one decimal place percentage and now I'm happy with this average now before we go on and, and this is set to go for uh, all of our students I want to point out that Georgia didn't take this quiz now is it skipping that or is it counting that well actually according to our formula we said add up her points whatever they are and divide by 300 so in her case it's counting that as zero um, if you want to ex simply excuse her from this quiz and not um, count that as a zero then you would need to change her formula and, and instead of di uh, dividing her points by 300 in this case you would need to divide by 290 so you would need to put a special formula in for Georgia now so in other words you want to be careful that how Excel handles a missing grade and make sure that that's consistent with how you want the missing grades to be handled well hope this has been useful for you in the next screencast we're going to learn how to have 
Excel, look at these grades and decide what the appropriate letter grade should be, A, B, C, or D, and we'll put that over here in column number N. Hope this has been good for you.